Again, we thank you all for getting on. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule just to fellowship once again. Any praise report testimony? Anybody want to open up for prayer? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you for the time and this opportunity you allowed us to come together once again to fellowship one with another in spirit of love, peace, and unity. We do the whole interview, for that is the essence of our being. We thank you for those that are here. We thank you for those who wanted to be here. They'll be here at the next point in time. We thank you for helping healing their bodies. We thank you for our time. Thank you for all these yeah. things. Again, and, and amen. 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 All right. Wait, wait, wait. let me sweep. <laughs> sweep. Switch. Switch. We can all hear you still. I like know, right? Okay, no, no it <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. All right. So, any praise reports, testimonies, by the ways, none. We all good. All, all, all is good. All is good. Anson created a pen. Hallelujah. Well, not a pen, but he created the pen that he desired that happened to be right there where he's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't get no better than that. Good stuff. Uh oh. I could have swore I turned that off. Okay. Well, either way. <laughs> all right. So get your beverages, get your snacks, get comfortable, bring all your questions. As we stated yesterday, we were going to talk about the second coming because we thought it would be meaningful to carry on with what we were talking about yesterday in terms of the meaning of the last judgment. So this probably be pretty quick. There's my mom and dad. Stepmom oh, said that. Yeah, they finally showed up. They're not. They're not. What do you mean by finally showed up? It's late. <laughs> oh. And he got his mask on. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, we're on page seventy-two. Mm -hmm. I'll let my dad get on since he's waving. He wants to say something. Mm -hmm. His internet's bad. Anyway, the title is going to be The Second Coming. And anybody know what The Second Coming is? If you have ever heard of The Second Coming? Hello, Dad. How are you? How you doing? Doing good. Why you got your, why you got your mask on? <laughs> oh, I think I used to wear it. Oh, OK. Well, hey, just, wear, wear on then. I just feel kind of automatic. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to have his own. <laughs> you think we're going to infect you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had it on all day. I just forgot to take it off. Okay. I, I, used to it. I don't want, know why people have such a hard time putting it on. Stubbornness, oh. fear. Oh. That's all it is. All right. So, anybody know what the second coming is? Hello, everybody. Has anybody ever heard of the second coming? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what have you heard or what was told or taught about the second coming? <laughs> well, we, we, I know that uh, it is supposedly that Jesus Christ is coming back, but the actual purpose, not so sure. Not so sure? Okay, that's a roundabout way. Anyone else? Same thing? Yeah, we also have second coming for Buddha, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of <laughs> they talk about second coming of their ascended masters. All the ascended masters talk about the second coming because all the ascended masters, which you are included, are part of the second coming. And you will find out, hey mom, let your hey, good get your girl with your good hair on. Look at you. <laughs> Looking like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so the second coming will find out. <laughs> the second coming will be more in depth about us because we're a part of it because when we talk when we start really explaining it to you and you go back and you really read it for yourselves you'll have a better understanding of what it really means so you're right it is a <laughs> second coming is a coming of the ascended masters that is exactly what it is but it comes with a purpose and i don't want to give the purpose away so we're going to skip question two because question two is what is the purpose of the second coming? <laughs> <laughs> so since you don't know what the purpose of the second coming is, this is going to be exciting. Yes. 
But you should know this. What is the Christ consciousness? The Christ consciousness has everything to do with what we're talking about. Not in terms of a person, but in terms of what? One conscious mind. So when we talk about the Christ consciousness, we're talking about a building block for humanity or for civilization to have the one mind to be in perfect peace and perfect harmony. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. that, is, that is the Christ consciousness. So people kind of get hung up on, on the religious side of the word and we want to explain what it is. Mm -hmm. Why is the second coming important? Well, it's important because it involves each and every one of you. That's why. And I'll explain more why you're involved in the process. And you're going to be excited. Well, hopefully you'll be excited because I. this is why I was sent for this right here, along with all the other masters. <laughs> so the affirmation is, only the best for God will do for me. Mm -hmm. Only the best for God will do for me. So when you wake up in your morning or when you lay down this evening, you tell yourself, only the best for God will do for me. Everybody agree to that? Yes. yes. All right. Christ Yeshua, that did you call Jesus, the last so far in a long line of Christ conscious being throughout history is one who proclaimed that many will come after him. You always hear me say, the works that I do, you shall do in greater works. This is one of the main huge passages that they use in the Christian Bible. So what we're doing is teaching you what was really spoken. Okay, what was said, what is it meant? <clears throat> and they will do greater things than he. So you remember when we say, you should do greater works. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the greater works. What works? What works did the Christ do? What did Yeshua do? That did you call Jesus? What works did he do? What What was the great works? The alarm went off. What did he do? Let's give some examples. What did he do? Uh, did he raise up dead people? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Did he walk on water? Yes. Did he turn water into wine? Yes. yes. Did he pull low vibrations out of people and restore their minds? Yes. Uh, Did he restore the blind to see? Yes. Yeah. Did he restore the deaf to hearing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did yes. he restore the mute to speaking? Yes. yes. Did he stop the woman who had an issue of blood? Well, she did that, but for the sake of this conversation, mm -hmm. he had everything to do with it. Correct? Yes. So now, did he come back into the same body after the resurrection? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did he ascend after his 40 days? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, if he says the works that we're going to do in the greater works, what greater works will you do? He walked on water. What will you do? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so what it does is it takes you to unlimitedness. You become unlimited because what the master understood and all the masters understood was they understood the laws of the universe. They understood the principles. You understand that it, that is, if I take this stone and hold it very high and release it, what will happen? It falls to the ground, gravity. Yes. So now the master showed you how to work with, we don't want to use the word manipulate, but if you want to say manipulate, he knew how to manipulate the energies of that thing or object that he was working with. Does that make sense? Yes. You can do the same thing. So let me let me do this. Anson, can I borrow you for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> Anson had a great testimony that just gave me chills because he he loves writing and he loves fountain pens. So there's a fountain pen that's very unique and very expensive and it's overseas and he used his greater works without using his own finances, without physically getting up and going hunting for this fountain pen. He merely had the Christ consciousness think 
this is what I want and this is why I want it. And there was no resistance into that thought of, man, it would be nice to have this pen. I really do like this pen. How much fun can I have with this pen? How much calligraphy can, and so forth and so on, right? <laughs> and then not only that, I'm going to be the only person to my knowledge in this area with this type of pen. Yes! <laughs> now we got a conversation piece. You see how that, you see how that works? And then he was reminded, hey, you didn't use your chiropractor allowance or benefit. And now the money's there that he wanted. We said it was expensive. So he ended up getting that to play for that and free of charge. Mm -hmm. So now this is just a, 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 this is one aspect of what the masters were talking about. Do you understand? Yeah. This is what he did and what you all do, especially when Melissa said, pastor, we're going to create rain. <laughs> Did he not go up and talk to the storm? Mm -hmm. Did he? Mm -hmm. Peace. Be still. And the yeah. water. Come on now. So she plays with weather. He plays with pen. Lily play, Lily and Sunni play with birds. <laughs> 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 and they all respond. Greater works. We would like to add this, that when you're in that flow of creating in that place of such joy, happiness and bliss, we would like you to continue to create because you're in the flow where now you, there's the least resistance of what you're wanting. So now that is the perfect time to ask. Side note. <laughs> Hopefully everybody got that. All right. This is the new wave of consciousness sweeping our planet, even as you hear this or read this. Christ consciousness is about building a Christ-oriented civilization for all humans, not just for our own liberation. So when we talk about the mind of Christ, what we're talking about is the perfect mind of freedom. So when you hear the mind of Christ, automatically think to yourself, this is the perfect mind of freedom. And what does that mean? That is the free will to create as God created. Let there be in the image and the likeness. Yes. This is the next big evolutionary step for humanity. It is for all of us to create a unified movement based on action, communication and communion rather, just, rather than just words and ideas. We've heard enough words and enough ideas. Now it's time to do what? Put it into action, bring it together and commune with it. This is the second coming of Christ. I'm glad you asked. Even though <laughs> the second coming happens when you follow your deepest heart's desire <laughs> and act on it spontaneously and what? Immediately. Yes, so notice we just said that when answers in that flow and when you're all in that flow and you are getting what you want, this is where we want you to follow your deepest heart and act on it. In other words, remember we gave the example about the homeless person and we went from <laughs> Five dollars to no dollars because we didn't act spontaneously. This is the same thing. So when it says go, don't question the go, just go. Where am I going? Who cares? Get in your car and go. You'll know when you get there. <laughs> the second company happens when you are no longer just students, but step into our mastery. The master is equally a student in this context. This is when we realize we are here to do greater things than Yeshua himself and are open and willing to embrace this possibility. Here's where people stop because when we start talking about the greater works, people put limitations because they go, oh no, that was just Jesus. That was for Jesus. He's the only one who could do that. I don't have any power. I don't have anything. I'm powerless. And he says, wait a minute. Didn't I just say what I do, you do and greater? So yeah. now you can't put it back on him in terms of a point the finger of responsibility because now he puts it on you to be accountable for what you do. Yes, Lily. But in most religion, they will tell you that as a common people, you will not, you will not uh, arrive at enlightenment or improvement without their help. Yep, and that is so false. Oh. Now we know. <laughs> we will say this. 
out of fairness, we need others to learn what we like and what we don't like. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes. So when, when information comes, it's a learning experience where does it fit what I am trying to do in this mastery or doesn't it? And you'll know the difference. Uh, oh, the second coming is the return of our naturally blissful, creative, and miraculous selves where miracles happen every day and are the normal. Mm -hmm. So when we begin to teach you master of Christ consciousness, it was to lead you so that you could start doing manifestations of miracles and not be in awe of the miracle because the miracles are what you should be doing every single day. If Anson were to tell somebody who didn't know anything about faith or anything about religion or whatever, what do you think they would call that? Oh man, that's magic. Mm. Or he has special powers or he's, he's God. Mm. Might even want to worship him. <laughs> or might just tell you you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but, for some, but for the person on the outside looking in, that would appear, that would make them appear crazy, wouldn't it? <laughs> when we go, you do the same thing that Jesus did. Pastor, I'm supposed to go raise up dead people when God and the Holy Spirit, are, you're under the influence of that? Absolutely. How many of you have bought new cars? Everybody. Everybody. How did you know where to go look to get the new car? It came through revelation. It came through the Holy Spirit. You begin to look at that car, whether it was a piece of junk or just a nice car and you just wanted something different and decided, I want a new car. Now, you begin to first tell people, hey, I think I'm going to get me a car. You know, what's wrong with the car you got? Well, nothing really wrong with it. I just like some new, you know, upgrade. It's 2021, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. So now, notice what you're doing as you begin to communicate in communion with your word, you're putting it into action, which leads to step two. God does the work. So now you start seeing every make and model because you went and Google searched it and found <laughs> all the car dealers <laughs> with all the prices. And then all of a sudden, some says, go to this one. Mm -hmm. How many of you have car dealers close to you and you went past that dealer to go to another dealer? Yeah. Okay, come on, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and some people go, wait a minute, there's a car dealer right there, but I wasn't told to go there. I was told to go there because when I went there, they cut me a better deal. They had exactly what I wanted. My payment was blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, oh, it is the actual fulfillment of our wildest dreams that if we act on now, will manifest. The second coming occurs when we reunite with our soul families, all of us, and with our true partners. Some might say this is my twin flame or whoever. Our deepest kindred spirits from which effortless creation flows, the creation, the creation that manifests more lovely, more love, beauty, and God. The second coming happens when we move purposely. People don't move with purpose anymore. People move based on either underreaction or overreaction. Mm -hmm. And that's normally where they begin to miscreate from that. Not everyone, but mo majority that we encounter miscreate from this place. They have no purpose. In other words, if you ask them, what do you want and why do you want it? They couldn't tell you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You ever heard married couples come in and, and you hear them talk about dinner? And it's kind of funny. And they go, well, baby, what do you want? Well, I don't know. What do you want? Well, I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> All of a sudden, nobody knows. But now everybody's stomach is grumbling and, <laughs> and making noise. <laughs> and they know they're hungry. But no one can make a decision on what they want to eat. <laughs> and here's why. Yes, Lily. <laughs> I already know through experience. I don't want to be hungry. So <laughs> I have to make the decision and just tell him to go there. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> and that no, that's a great point because normally people get in such a rut like that where 
they have to eat what the other person is eating to feel in a relationship. Mm -hmm. so what if I don't want? What if I don't want noodles and you want a veggie burger? Uh, so now, <laughs> what do you want? I want a burger. Well, I don't want a burger. Well, who? You don't have to eat a burger. Yes. <laughs> But this is where the back and forth goes from, okay? That's a side note. Just side note. <laughs> hey, Lord Paul is on. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Uh, oh, the second coming happens when we move purposely, purposefully in action, uniting with others who passionately feel the same desire. This is the law of attraction where you are going to be connected to who you are attracted to. Hey, Lord Paul, how are you, God? Good to have you on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to do, do you like he does me when he yes, calls sir. me. Thank you. <laughs> when, he, when he calls my phone, this is what he does to me. I'll say, praise the Lord, and he'll go, yo! <laughs> and I have to go. <laughs> oh, I love that you. That is the <laughs> truth. <laughs> All right, so page 73. God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> you know I love you. So, God bless you. Amen. So this is where the this is where we start attracting the like-minded people. That way we can have the joyful, blissful uh, experience. Amen. The second Amen. coming occurs when we leave behind the old world, the old relationship, old thinking. I should have put that in there also. Old thinking old habits when we leave those behind now we're going to the collective consciousness of the collective consciousness when we sort out the wheat from the shape and get radical in our ways of creating and expressing more transformation more love more beauty it is time to feel and know that the only i'm sorry it is it is time to feel and know that only the best for god will do not think in limited or small ways. Do not restrict the possibility that can happen. It is from all these ways of being that we co-create ourselves and new human civilizations can be birthed. God wants us to be totally who we are in our own unique way, not when someone else is or was or wants us to be. Everybody ought to say amen to that. <laughs> amen. And especially parents because we ruin our kids because we want them to be something that they don't want to be <laughs> hey, man. I'm hey, shooting man. all the parents yes y'all gonna get it because <laughs> we're all guilty but we just don't want to admit it so I'm admit it for all of us <laughs> well and it's out of love because we only want the best for our children yes but we just, we just have a weird way about doing it and going about it because we think we know more about what they want than what they want would that be a, a, a honest assessment? <laughs> How many of you wanted your kids to go to college? Raise your hands. Every lap. Yep. Oh now, yeah. If we were to be honest, Anson, did you want to go to college? You can say now you're grown. Probably so. But if you had your choice, would that have been the first choice? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to think about it, that's a no. See that? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> See, because my parents wanted me to go to college and I went to college and it ended up costing them a whole lot of money for a semester that I failed because I didn't want to go to college. But because my parents, you got to go, you got to go. If you don't go to college, you're going to get an education. You're not going to get a job. You're not going to be successful in life. And this is what I heard my whole life. And then I got there and went, I hate school. I really hate, I love the party at the school, but I hate school. <laughs> so, sorry. so it wasn't then, but later. So then it was for me to go get a job and find out what made me happy. And when I told my mother that I joined the Navy, she thought I was lying to her. Well, you ain't doing no Navy. You don't know. Please, you're, you're too scary. You ain't going to work. Mm, no. <laughs> My stepfather was, yeah, because I'm eating up all the groceries in the house. <laughs> He's wanting me to leave. <laughs> so when I made that decision, it was a decision where she had to grow into and say, you know what? 
I have to respect his decision because at the end of the day, I did my best on raising him. So the choices he's made are going to be in good conscience. And we as parents have to say, you know what? My kid is going to make a mistake and it's okay. Be there for them. Be there for that support. Amen, parents. Amen. <laughs> All right. Back on topic now. Now the time to accept. Okay. Over too many years, you have been accepting the scraps, the bits and pieces of, of the spiritual and physical table, compromising on the place to give God in the world. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. So don't take no more scraps from nobody or anybody. When you get something, you take, if they offer you a scrap of chicken, you take the whole bird. <laughs> Go ahead, Lily. <laughs> this is the attitude whereby people are just being contented with mm -hmm. their situation and not wanting to uh, improve. So they say, oh, this is, this is all I have. So that's mm -hmm. okay. That's fine. Yep. And they stay in, and it says, be ye not content. But what that means is don't be stuck where you're at. Want better. Do better. Expect more. Have more desire. Instead of, oh, I'm poor. I'm always going to be poor. I'll never be rich. My kids are going to be poor, even though they don't say that. But what are the kids watching? They're watching what poor looks like. Mm -hmm. So now poor becomes a behavior. Poor becomes a mental no. thought. That makes sense? So this is the time when we only do the best for God, nothing else will suffice anymore. Nothing else will lead us forward. Nothing else will satisfy our souls. Holding this space and intent means it actually manifests as you are ready to step up for self and put self in its rightful place. The self rightful place is at the right hand of God. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. In the chaos and delusion of the modern day world. If you do not compromise and go for it, then Christ will come to you, stirred by your passion and commitment for excellence. In saying only the best for God will do for me, we invite Christ into our lives fully as Christ consciousness means no compromise. Keep with this truth, hold this intent, and you will be amazed at what happens in your life. Experiment, take a risk, learn what you have always wanted. <laughs> to follow the whispers of your soul that pop up now and again in which you dismiss because you are too busy <laughs> with the dog. <laughs> Leave what no longer serves your highest potential and trust that you that you will be looked after. The second coming is the revelation. Revelation is what you get directly from God. That is what we want you to be in awe of, not the miracles. We want you to be in awe or miracle of the revelation. The revelation that we are Christ, not separate, inclusive. So Lily is the Christ. Sudi is the Christ. Anson is the Christ. Stanley is the Christ. Paul is the Christ. Say, I am the Christ. I am the Christ. Oh, God, y'all don't sound it through. Good Lord. <laughs> I've heard better people at a funeral. <laughs> You'd be excited about it. I am the Christ. When Anson was playing, right. down, he was the Christ. We will say this. We will say this. If you're going to be anything, be God doing it. Yes. I'm God driving the car. I'm dry, I'm God golfing. I'm God using my fountain pen. I'm God doing martial arts. I'm God doing whatever. Be God doing it. That way you'll make you'll have fun. You won't find the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be happy about it. <laughs> Go tell somebody, oh, I'm the Christ. I'm the, I'm the Christ. So really? Oh, I don't want that. No. I'll try something else. <laughs> so we are the Christ, and we are here to be all that we have been created to be. The collective conscience of humanity in, uni in unity is God itself. I, want, I need to say that again. The collective conscience of humanity in unity is God itself. 
So when we say greater is he who is in me, this is what we're talking about. So when we say you're God, it's not to blow your ego up, make you feel like you're all powerful. Well, you are, but not over other people. <laughs> but that makes sense. We, yes. This is to help you understand yes. that you are in the image and the likeness of your creator. Equal. That makes sense? Yes. When we unite, we reveal God in action. So when the Bible says when two or three are gathered in his name, when we're all together right here, we reveal God in action because if we all decided, matter of fact, do y'all remember yesterday when, when Sister Williams' internet was acting up? Yeah. I said, everybody, I said, we're going to decree her internet. Uh -huh. Did her internet clear up? Yes. Yes, it did, didn't it? Did it take long? Not at all. So when we come together, we reveal what? God in action. So all of us, God, came together and we spoke with one singular voice and manifested for her to have a great experience without... I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you hear, you hear the, the mouth moving, but no words. <laughs> <clears throat> This second coming is the next step in the divine plan for evolution on earth and is the blueprint seated within every one of our souls. The second coming occurs when we integrate all aspects of Christ consciousness within ourselves and in action with others. This then forms the foundation for Christ-centered civilization on earth, a culture and society that is based on what? love. This is why when we first started teaching, the first thing we started teaching was unconditional love. How to love because we didn't understand really what love was until we started practicing 30 days of being in love and then we found out, oh my goodness. Oh, I have to love that one? Oh. <laughs> what about that one behind that one? <laughs> This former foundation, okay, uh, based on love, e equality, wisdom, and awareness. A Christ civilization is based on group consciousness. It starts with groups coming together freely to pull their collective talents to create something far more than its parts. This uniting creates the highest potential, revealing unimagined transformation and illumination for everyone no matter which spiral of evolution they're residing in. This union of working together will surpass anything Earth has ever seen before. So remember what I told you about the years 22 and 24 coming up? This is what we're talking about. This is what the second coming is, is all about. This is where loving wisdom is whom I was sent to teach as all the other masters. This is why when you hear the Buddha and you hear all of them, we all come with the same message. Mm. The second coming is awakening from the collective dream into our highest potential. In other words, y'all seen the matrix? Yes. You know, take blue, blue pill or red pill? Which one you want? <laughs> take the red pill. <laughs> the second coming <laughs> is the birthing of the golden children on earth with us and the new children that are coming here and they're here now. So if you look at our children, um, now, especially the younglings, they come with such a different attitude, such a different behavior, or such a the the humans are calling it an entitlement. Oh, these 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 kids are they think they're entitled to everything. Oh, they think they're perfect. And they they come in and go, well, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Look where I came from. I came from the kingdom of hell. I'm, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so that that is. The second thing. Any questions, comments, concerns about it? Hopefully, it made sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Reason the reason why we again why we taught it was to help piggyback along the meaning of the last judgment. Uh -huh. But it's also going to be in when we begin to when we finish up this uh, course of miracles, we will either teach you the the true version of the Bible version. Maybe we haven't decided yet or the Christ blueprint. I'm thinking I'm leaning more toward the Christ blueprint because this is more tailored for us. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Questions, comments, concerns before we close, guys? <laughs> we all good? Uh, all right. I'm good. We're I'm good. good. See you, then. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have a group prayer tonight since I can't get none of y'all to pray individually. We're all going to pray <laughs> at the same time out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no. On the right. count of three, whoever ends last, say amen. And that's how we will end. You can pray a short prayer. Okay, we would say pray, don't pray long. Let me just say that. <laughs> Give some people want to be praying, they want to preach the whole sermon. <laughs> so the last person who ends, we'll say amen and we'll close. Is that is that okay? Yes. So on yes. the count of three. One, two, two and a half, <laughs> three. Let's go. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you for this, thank you for this, thank you for this teaching and learning and all that you have done for us. Thank you for making us up today. Thank you for for loving us and loving our family. Thank you, thank you for what we're learning today and how great you are to us. Thank you, Father, in the name Thank of your you. Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. See how easy that was? <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> all right. Y'all have a blessed one. Have a great week. And I hope to see you all. I love you from the bottom right. of my heart. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs>